Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. This is a brief supplemental edition to the PT-489 video, and it presents a step-by-step -step explanation of what I did to backdate the mast and radar from what's supplied in the kit. Originally developed in 1941, S-band Navy search radar was adapted for large Navy patrol aircraft and blimps through the use of gyro stabilization. Further development of the ASG radar led to the more common AN-APS-2 units known as George. A compact SG version for PT boats began to appear in theater in 1943 and was designated SO. The ultimate development for PT boats was the extremely effective SO-3, which saw service in 1945. The Ravel kit represents a 1945 boat with all the late war features, and it correctly mounts the Dash 3 radar. PT-489 was one of the first of what are considered the late series boats, and it was built in 1943 with the original Dash 1 radar. While similar, not all the SO installations were the same. Since many were added in theater, there were a number of variations in masts and domes. And here are just a few examples. The basic structure of the Rebel mass seemed to be similar to some of the Dash 1 units, and I first thought about just doing a modification, so I stripped down and cleaned up the kit mass. However, as I got more definitive information, I found that it was necessary to construct an all new unit. For this, I want to give a very big thank you to a couple of members on the PT forum board who responded to my request for information. Jerry, who's a crew member of PT-658 based out of Portland, who posted a series of detailed images with measurements of the mast and dome. And Jeff, who maintains a website, PT103.com, where you can find a wealth of detailed information, especially the early 80-foot Elko boats. I started by first making the brackets that support the mast. These were machined from brass rod. In the sequence I'm showing, I used an end mill to do the outside of the bracket, and typically that's the way I normally machine a part like this. But since these parts are so small, they didn't require a lot of material reduction. So I also made a pair by just using the saw for everything, and it actually produced a better surface finish. Here are the brackets cemented in place. Next, the radar dome was machined from acrylic rod. Once the location of the brackets and the size of the dome were established, I was able to build up a basswood jig to support the major components. The horizontal rod's the hinge point for the mast, and the vertical rod maintains the center while aligning the dome. The horizontal piece is the first part of the rectifier shell. Two short lengths of 20,000 styrene were added to the top of the rectifier shell. The sides of the mast were scored, and then fold it in to mate with the radar dome. Support was added to ensure that the mast sides remained straight. The X-brace construction started with a 30,000 styrene pin placed at the cross point. Each leg was cut, tapered, and then cemented in place. With the basic structure in place, it was time to test fit the mast. The rectifier shelf was finished off by first adding the faceplate the bottom, and then finally the top. Once all the pieces were in place, the cutout was filed to shape. The rectifier was milled from acrylic. The flexible joint was created by slotting a piece of brass rod and then surrounding it with a machine collar. Here's everything finally together. I used the kit's folding mask prop. The yard arm is just 14,000 steel wire. Dealing with the various angles certainly offered some additional challenges. With a little planning and a solid jig to locate the known points, the end result can be a lot more predictable. I hope that some of the methods and techniques that I've shown here might give you a few ideas for the next time you're thinking about adding that bit of signature custom detail. 
So long for now, and I'll see you next time.